Hello. So right now, today is May 30th. I've made it from October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Eight months in Uzbekistan. And you can see <laughs> some of the lines. I probably had these lines before under my eye. But they're there still, and they grew a little bit. But at the same time, my heart is filled with a high degree of gratitude to be able to have the opportunity to work in Uzbekistan for the past eight months. I'm presently sitting by a garden. I'm working on my final paperwork before I uh, leave and I've had a lovely journey here. I've really enjoyed my time. I feel really peaceful. I was able for a period of time to rent a home in Tashkent in the capital. And then I rented an area in Sirdadia, um, a room. And I've just really enjoyed it. The family is so kind. And I've been living really simply. I've really enjoyed that. There's two adorable girls. There's these two adorable cats. There is a great family. And they're really kind and friendly. And it really um, fills my heart. Yesterday, I went with some of the teachers to a place called Zamin. It's a... Uh, quite famous in the summer and in the spring it's a really natural place it's mountains they call it the switzerland of uzbekistan it's on the border of uzbekistan and tajikistan i bought some delicious honey different styles of honey the darker ones uh, were actually aged honey by two years so over time the honey flavors actually change I need to find more natural honey like that. It made me really happy. And I was seated eating some kasha and uh, feeling really peaceful. I was talking to the little girl. She was so funny. She brought some ice cream out and then she was putting it to melt in the sun. The sun is really strong. She's like, I want yogurt. Yogurt hachu. Yogurt hachlaiman. In terms of Uzbek, um, I'm definitely more at ease with Russian than Uzbek. But what I'm able to express for basic conversational purposes, as long as people talk relatively slowly, I can understand things through context usually for Uzbek as well. I want to learn more grammar. I did the best I could do. Didn't sit down and just calmly understand all the grammar points, but it's hard to do that. I'm sitting here smelling the beautiful tomatoes they're just so refreshing i just i gotta just show them again when you are around a tomato and you just put your hand on it let me do the little ah oh, it's like the best feeling ever that that's fresh tomato smell i absolutely love it and when i was here about a month and a half ago the land wasn't really prepared and i was concerned i wanted to see if they were going to plant and i found out that I guess you could say my host mother, the person who I'm renting from, said um, she actually grew up on a farm and I think had at least 12 brothers and sisters. Uzbek families, probably more in rural areas, but I'm sure also in cities, but not in the same way. Pretty large families. It's kind of similar to Armenian families in the past. Like I know I had a great grandfather who I believe had at least 10 kids. I don't know if they all survived. But... Um, she just came from a big family. She used to take care of cows, um, milking them. She used to garden. She gardens really quickly. In terms of removing all the weeds, it takes me quite longer, and I always seem to leave little bits as around. And she's really quick at it. And I'd have to say that I really appreciate Sedadia. It's not a tourist place, but the reason I appreciate is it. I appreciate the fact that it's just authentic. There's a certain village feel to it, even though it's obviously a city. Gulistan 
Fidelity is the region and Galustown is the city. But I've really appreciated spending time going to schools. I went to this final event at um, Bayou 2. It was at a school of a teacher named Dildora. And they ring bells to kind of commemorate the end of the year. And the students do some dances and performances, some poetry recitation. Uh, poetry is definitely a strong part of the society here. Considering uh, Alish and Navai, who I get a sense he's really the, st the person who started the Uzbek identity with the Uzbek language. Before that, a lot of things were maybe some Turkic languages, but it wasn't considered Uzbek or Persian. But um, when he started writing in Uzbek, it kind of commemorated the Uzbek not like ethnicity as having an identity through language. And that's why poetry is really important. So the bell is ringing to show that it's the last time it's going to be ringing for the academic year. And I was actually invited as one of the special guests there. And they had me do a short presentation in Uzbek, which was a bit heart wrenching or a little heart, leave a heart race. But I did learn how to say, I wish you in Uzbek, it's Tilaman. And I said, Oma Tilaman. I'm wishing you uh, success. No, Omat is luck. Success is Muvafakayat. Muvafakayat Tilaman. Um, Yashra Kelajak says, Kelajak, you know, future Tilaman. So these kind of my attempts at trying to say those are interesting in, in, in front of a group of maybe 150 people. The old school was there. It's a smaller school in a smaller town. And. Then I, I got the great opportunity to meet with the Doida teacher. He's a drum instructor, and he's actually lived in Russia before. And we did a performance together. I absolutely have loved every moment that I've been able to been given to perform with local performers. I want to contact my friend who works as a, a music producer and say, you know, this is my last couple of days here. Can I come record some music with you? Can we maybe invite some people and do some, you know, collaborations? It may or may not happen. But I would love to make an album before leaving. I feel rife, filled with creative ideas and energy. Sometimes I return to the same imagery over and over. But part of the creative process is knowing that you're not in control is knowing that you are, in fact, I wouldn't say being controlled, but you are an instrument of a higher knowledge, of a higher power. You can add it to spiritual element or not, but the idea is that when you're creating, you are taking elements that may be all known, right? I know the word the, I know the word plant, but when I combine them in a new way, the plant, my eyes slant. I can or I can't. I try to believe what I breathe and my heart will conceive what it can and what it can't. I will forget as I just be you my best. So like you take old elements and you create them in new ways. Oh, I had a little voice there. And I just love doing that. It's really creative and inspiring to me. So I did that with the Doida teacher. He drummed. And I rapped. I can share a link of it below. And I just loved it. I want to continue to collaborate with other artists, if possible, before leaving the region. If I could make, you know, 10 songs, I'd be really proud. If I could make five songs, I'd be really proud. Kind of combining tradition with um this freshness and part of me listens to my voice and I say, Oh, my voice is not a typical rapping voice, but whatever it is, it's me expressing myself. And I really appreciate doing that. And I appreciate it when other people appreciate it. So I want to continue sharing my gift or one of my gifts. Yes. So this area, Serdaria, used to be swamps, maybe 70 years ago uh, during the Soviet Union. 
they kind of brought in a lot more water and they took a lot of the areas that were swamp or desert and they um they started cultivating it for cotton and other products and um, a lot of people moved from other regions to this region so the majority of people are not originally from here if you go back two generations which is pretty interesting or maybe three because people get married relatively young when they say i'm above 30 they say how could you not be married how is that possible it blows their minds often We've got an upcoming conference, been working on preparing some materials for the conference. I also finally want to make a professional site for all the work that I do musically, as well as uh, teaching wise and showing some of the work that I've done with teachers. I mean, I easily saw 75, 80 classrooms, which I think was quite a lot over, you know, the span of about five months. Yeah, because the first three months I was doing trainings in Tashkent. I feel blessed once again to be able to have met some really creative people, to meet some really kind people. People in Uzbekistan I've experienced are really um, warm and welcoming, and I just really appreciate that. It's something that I, I gravitate to, actually. It's something that I personally am. I'm a warm and welcoming person also. And I could say that I've seen a lot of different places in this country, Maybe not all of them, obviously, but I've seen a diversity and a plethora of places. Probably some places, maybe even Uzbek people haven't seen. And probably some, of course, they have. Um, what am I looking forward to in the next two weeks? I want to keep moving in this gradual way. Um, slowly connecting with people, using Uzbek use in Russian the best I can to, to connect with people. Um, I will go to Kyrgyzstan probably to a beautiful lake there. I just want to go in the lake. But I'll be honest, the warmth and the love that I feel from spending time with a family, it really triumphs and goes beyond anything that I'd ever want to do in terms of tourism for me. Because just what I really look forward to is that level of connection. Yeah, I was just thinking and I said I need to record whatever I'm feeling right now because like every experience, nothing stays the same. Everything changes over time and we need to embrace that change, know it's part of life. We don't need to fight it, 